Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Marlin Fishing Addicts Northwest. I'm here with Cameron Black, Gone Catching Guide Service. And we're gonna just do a quick tutorial on how we're fishing our steelhead worms out on the river. He's gonna cover drift fishing, how he rigs that up, and then I'm gonna talk about my float fishing setup that I use out on the river. But before we do that, let's talk about Mad River Manufacturing. Jimmy over at Mad River recently got a new six inch mold that he's using, so he can now make any of these six inch worms in any two-tone color that you want. Pretty exciting news. He's gonna be carrying them on his website and also a few of the local retailers. All right, guys, so first off, Cameron's gonna go over his drift fishing setup, which I think is pretty simple, isn't it, Cameron? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty much, I like, I just prefer to take the four inch worm and just to thread it on the hook. But one thing I do like to do uh, when I'm threading this on is I try to get that hook as far back as I can. Now, sometimes it takes just a little bit of finagling and just trying to get that hook point back there, trying to keep the point in the center of the worm until we get back close to the tail. And what that's gonna do there, get that almost doing. What that's gonna do there, it's gonna allow that hook to just kind of dangle just outside the worm. Now, when that's dangling down like that, if a steelhead comes up, it's almost like you're bead fishing. Um, you know, just where that fish comes and grabs the presentation, somewhere that loose hook's gonna come in and lock into the corner of the mouth. So I just don't think you miss a lot of strikes this way. Um, if you want to uh, doctor that up with a corky or you're going to be drifting like some snagger areas or your presentation needs a little more color to it, like the water's a little dingy or a little high, um, you can add a corky or you can even add a bead to it too if you're just looking for a different color contrast. But pretty much that, pretty much yeah, that's it. Yeah, because these already float, right? You don't really need a, a corky. No, you don't really need to. It's just kind of an added presentation. You know, if it's summertime and the water's clear and you, you, know, you still feel like fishing a worm, you can actually just take that off and just drift that just as it is there. Cool. And now I'm gonna go over a few of the ways that I rig my worms when I'm float fishing. The first way that I do it, which a lot of you have probably already seen, some of you may have not, I like to cut these six inch worms. So I take these six inch worms, and there's a collar right here. And basically I'm gonna cut right behind that collar. And what you've essentially done is you've created a four inch worm, which what Cameron likes to fish. But the reason I like to fish these this way is because if you look at a traditional four inch worm, honestly, it's a little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter, and a little bit smaller. So with these six inch worms, you just have a little bit bigger of a profile on the four inch when you cut it down at the collar like that. So then what you do is you're just gonna take your jig head, any little standard super glue will work. I just give them a little dab of super glue and it's gonna help hold them on the jig head. So you just get a little dab here. You don't need much at all. It's super glue obviously, so. And then you're gonna take your worm and just thread it right in the center here. And then once you get that on there, hold it on there for a couple seconds. And try not to super glue your fingers to the hook. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's gonna hold your, hold your worm on there nice for you. There's also a couple companies out there that are making these keeper hooks, which work pretty awesome. Then you don't have to use super glue. Let's get this lid screwed back on here. Sorry guys. Um, so you can also just you know cut it again at the collar, and with these keeper hooks, no super glue required. You're just gonna thread it right through the middle again, and you're kind of just using your best judge of where you should put it out before you, so you don't so you got your worm straight on the shank, and then this is just gonna go up over the keeper. And then that keeper's gonna hold that on there straight and nice, which, man, this purple and black looks pretty awesome. <laughs> Summertime, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then the other, let's go over two more things that I do. One of the weird setups that I use that not a lot of people do, I have seen a few people do it, is rigging it wacky style. This is kind of a funny way to do it, but I'm telling you, it does catch fish just like it catches a bass. A steelhead will attack this thing just like any other fish would. So all you're doing is just basically finding the halfway center point of the worm, and you're just gonna literally put this shank right through the center. I bet as that sucker's bobbing down the river, it's sitting there pulsing with every time that exactly. bobber moves just a little bit. So all that's doing is just literally just like this in the water. Every little current thing's grabbing that worm and it's wacky. So that's, that's another way to do it. The other thing you can do 
is just take the full six inch worm. I mean, if you're out there and the water's just really brown, you're fishing some high water, or you know, it doesn't even have to be brown, just some high colored water. Contrary to what people think, these fish will eat this entire six inch worm. So you just rig that on the shank, just like you would the four inch that I cut at the collar. And there you go. You got a really, really big tasty treat for those steelheads to eat. Well, excellent. You guys got five different ways to rig your Mad River worms. If you guys like what you see here, you can go on Facebook and like Gone Catching Guide Service and Fishing Addicts Northwest. You can also go to fishingaddictsnorthwest.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got tons of videos that are going to be coming out. I would say that this uh, winter steelhead season is kind of like your, uh, your cup of tea, huh? Yeah, I'm excited. Excellent. Hopefully we'll have a good year and we'll see you guys on the water. See you on the river.